Our webinar today is entitled Meeting Today's Micro Milling Challenges. This is Don Nelson. I'm publisher of Micro Manufacturing and Cutting Tool Engineering Magazines. I'll be serving as moderator. Today's presenter is Ralph Piccolo, who is Vice President of Sales at Symmetron Technologies, a leading provider of integrated CAD CAM solutions for mold, tool, and die makers, as well as manufacturers of discrete parts. Ralph began his career in 1978 as a CNC programmer. He subsequently worked as a plant manager and an applications engineer. He joined Symmetron Technologies in 1996. Ralph will be discussing the trend toward milling part features with tools as small as one-tenth of a millimeter in diameter and the challenges this creates in terms of materials, machine tool requirements, and generating complex tool paths. The presentation will take about 30 minutes or so. It is being recorded and you will be notified when it is available for review. Ralph will answer as many questions as time permits after his presentation. He will respond to all unanswered questions via email. To submit a question, type it into the GoToWebinar box at right and hit the Send button. Ralph, I'll turn things over to you now. OK. Thank you, Don. Thank you, everybody, for attending this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> today, uh, today's agenda will go through um, what is micromilling, uh, the industries and applications that are uh, using micromilling, uh, the technology, um, definitely the tooling and the CNC programming. Um, starting off with what is micromilling, machining with su superb surface quality with intolerances as tight as 0 .0001 millimeter using cutting tools as small as, as 10 microns or, or 4 tenths of an inch. Um, the micro milling machines uh, have high speed spindles up to 25,000 RPM. Uh, I did read an article about the University of Florida that is working with a, uh, a direct spindle that will go a half a million RPMs. Uh, it's, this whole market is really crazy. Um, Along uh, with the micro milling, you have to have very accurate machine tools with uh, repeatability and, and uh, location and uh, all that stuff. Um, again, the, the cutting tools have to be very accurate. And they're cutting materials as hard as uh, 80 Rockwell. Um, quite a bit is going on in this industry. Uh, these machines, uh, they go from two axes through five axes. Again, spindle speeds 25,000 or 250,000 RPM and up. Uh, positional accuracy is very, very tight. Um, the acceleration of 2G force on that. Maximum feed rates. Uh, again, as we get into this further, you'll see why all of this is a requirement for these machines. Um, also, the tool monitoring system, the picking up the tool. Um, monitoring the uh, wear, the load, the growth on the uh, on the spindle, and then uh, the machines also the uh, the controls. They have to be able to process tremendous amount of data very quickly. They have to you know be able to look ahead and see what's uh, what's coming uh, when you're getting into corners and turns. Some of the uh, industries that are um, using this application, the medical, dental. Um, if you notice there on the left, that ant that's on a, uh, it's kind of hard to, to visualize, but that's actually a, a chess board uh, with all the pieces on there. So uh, these are how small things are getting out there. Electronics, rapid prototype, engraving. Um, we're even seeing machining of uh, electrodes out of uh, pure copper. Um, jewelry, and uh, also in education, we see a lot of research and development being done on this uh, new technology and uh, the new machines and cutting uh, tough materials and, and the type of cutters out there. Um, some of the applications, this one here was um, uh, stainless steel. It, the, these posts were 8 thousandths in diameter. Um, they were 60,000 high, and uh, a 30,000 end mill was used. It was uh, 
um, you know, again, real small stuff. This this one here uh, was brass. Um, you know, those cone shapes in the middle there. The wall thickness is three thousandths, and around the whole edge on the outside there, there's eight thousandths diameter holes. So uh, you can imagine, you know, how tough it would be to cut these with these tools, and and how accurate you have to be. Now, if we look at the micro milling challenges, um, <clears throat> the world is getting smaller. There's a, a tremendous increase in demand for uh, manufacturing uh, micro scale components. Um, you know, and every day there's new challenges with new new materials. Uh, they're coming up with uh, new different, uh, new and different mold coating. Um, Again, they're milling parts, uh, 0.1 millimeter diameter tools. Uh, they have to achieve, you know, micron level accuracy. And uh, when these parts are that small, they have to come off, you know, completely done. So the surface quality has to be, you know, way up there. They're they're measuring these things with the with microscopes, and it's quite amazing. Um, some of the opportunities. Um, you can see here there's uh, you know a small part there that was a two shot mold and a, another one which was an insert mold uh, for the electronics in industry. Um, a lot of people are looking into this uh, as a niche market so they can you know have some competitive edge because not everybody's able to produce tooling or produce parts you know this small. Now, if we look at the micro milling machine requirements, uh, um, the machine is only good as its weakest individual component. It's definitely less forgiving than traditional milling. And each machine uh, component must be suitable for the, the requirement at task. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're cutting real hard material, then you're going to have to look at different tooling than rather than using uh, you know standard tooling for you know softer material, so you know there's a lot to consider. If we look at um, some of the things that you should consider if you're if you're uh, investigating micro milling, you know the bed and the architecture of the machine. You know again when you're holding microns and you're cutting with you know um, you know two three thousands one thousands you know, four tenths cutters, you know, every bit of vibration is going to affect what's happening. Um, also the temperature, um, you know, of, of the room and the parts and definitely the spindle, you know, what type of spindle and, you know, what happens when, uh, when you change tools, how accurate is it changing the tools. So there's all kinds of equipment to monitor all of this um, as you you know, running these machines, the drive and motion uh, technology, you know, how accurate is it? I mean, these machines move so fast, they have to get to the point, you know, is, is there backlash? Uh, you definitely have to have high acceleration. And, and uh, you know, the guide system definitely got to be uh, repeatable and, and consistent. And you can't have any wear on your guide system when you're trying to hold microns. Uh, another thing to consider is, um, you know, how you're going to hold your parts, how you're going to clamp them. You know, you got to be able to quickly interchange parts. You have to be, you know, uh, very accurate on when you're putting in the second, third, fourth part. Um, and again, on the controls and monitoring system, tooling. You know, when these spindles are in there forever or in there for a long time, and you're cutting. Um, you know, we did one test with a 6,000 ball cutter that cut for 12 hours. Well, you know, is the length of that tool changing? What's the wear on the tool? You know, what's the force? Is it running out? You know, all of this has to be monitored while you're cutting. Um, and again, these controls have to be, you know, very fast and process a tremendous amount of data um, in a short period of time. And then uh, you 
know, laser pickups. They're using laser pickups for picking up the part, locating the part, monitoring the tools. Um, there's a, quite a variety of different tools out there. Um, you know, I, I don't. I'm not an expert on the tools, but um, if you look here, these are you know it goes from one thousandth to nineteen thousandths diameter. These are now standard tools that they have on shelf that you can call and order and get. Uh, um, this is um, you know it's definitely a growing market. The picture on the right is a, a four tenths tool next to a human hair, and um, that's what people have used on some of these machines. And what we feel is a big uh, requirement for micro milling is the CAD CAM system. Um, first of all, when you're bringing in data, you have to bring in the data as accurate as possible. You can't have any little uh, gaps. Um, any little mismatch is definitely going to show up. Also, the system must be able to handle tight tolerances, um, machining strategy. You have to have a tremendous amount of tool control so you can cut these parts the way you need to cut them based upon the material, based upon your cutter, and based upon the results that you're looking for. One of, these, uh, one of the other very important things is the knowledge of stock. If you can imagine that uh, you're cutting with a 2,000th diameter cutter, and you're removing a bunch of material, well, when you go back with that next tool path, you better know exactly where the stock is, because a, a half thousand uh, a stock could break that tool or not. So, you know, that's very important. Also, you know, these tools aren't real long. You're getting real close to the part, so you have to be able to track the tool, the holder, and where, where all of this can fit into the part. Um, and, uh, you know, the CAD CAM requirement, you know, the, these machines are, you know, like I said, two axis and five axis. Um, your CAD CAM system must support, you know, the multi-axis machines. Again, the data translation, you know, gaps and uh, mismatches um, are going to cause you problems. You're not going to end up with the results. Um, the system should be able to read native format, bring the data exactly as, as it was designed. Um, it's real nice to have an integrated CAD system, so in the event that you have to do some modeling of a holder or a fixture, you can bring that right into the CAM system. The CAM system then can recognize that the, you know, the, the word piece is there and the stock and the holder and your fixture. Um, the CAD and CAM system must be tuned and optimized to support the following requirements. Tight tolerances. Again, geometric tolerances of 0.1 micron is very, very tight. Um, the algorithms to produce the tool pass, the smooth tool pass, um, has to be there. And definitely these machines need a tremendous amount of point distribution um, throughout your tool path. So it has to be able to support that as well. And you, you definitely want to be able to round and smooth all of your tool paths, whether you're approaching, whether you're, you're trying to get into a corner, or just changing directions. You, you must have rounding of the corners. And again, smooth and accurate tool path. This picture here is um, basically we took a traditional CAM software and we created a tool path with the same uh, tolerances, same side step. It was a 0.6 millimeter ball with a 20 micron step over. And you can see here um, the spikes on the left versus a nice smooth tool path. Now those spikes are, are measuring, you know, uh, 0.4 micron doesn't sound like very much, but when you look at this part under a microscope, you're going to see all of that. 